Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is Series 7 Guru coming to you from my studio in fabulous Las Vegas. If you have uh, purchased tutoring or done a Kaplan class with me, have a free office hour, first come, first serve. And uh, first out of the gate, somebody wanted to talk about decretion. That's a dean term, not a test term. Uh, straight line amortization upward is called accretion. And you should know that word. Straight line amortization downward is called decretion, not a test term. It's just going the other way. Now, the IRS thinks that when you buy a muni bond, that you have other things in your portfolio, Sandy, and they're correct. Mm -hmm. And so they're not going to let you decide when to take a loss on this uh, bond. Because you're buying a higher than today's tax-free return because that's why it's trading at a premium. And so they say, listen, you got to take it in little bitty hits along the way. And so what we're going to do is we're going to amortize or adjust our cost base each year. Here's a very much an example of a test question. An investor purchased a municipal bond for $1,120. So first thing you as a test taker have to recognize is that indeed this is a muni bond purchased at a premium. And we're not going to let you decide when to realize that $120 loss, because what we think you would like to do is take it at one fell swoop at maturity to offset gains you may have elsewhere in your portfolio. No, no, no. It has 12 years to maturity. So if you held it to maturity, you would have neither gain nor loss because you would have uh, amortized it downward over the course of uh, those 12 years. Here it says after holding the bond for six years, the investor sells the bond for 1030 what is the investor's gain or loss? So there's uh, three steps here. We have to recognize this is a muni bond purchased at a premium. We got to figure out how much we're going to decrete each year, adjust our cost base. So we're going to lose $120 over 12 years. So the adjustment we need to make each year is $10. Mm -hmm. So basically, well, let me get out my annotation tool. There's our thousand at maturity. And so we're losing $120 if we held it. So that means after this first year, every year I'm going to write this down 10. So that first year, it's going to be 1110. And then it's going to be 1100. And then it's going to be 1090. Well, now it tells me here that we've held it for six years. So we should have written off $10 a year over six years. So we should have decreted 60 bucks. Again, mm -hmm. decreed is not the test question, but what you have to be able to tell me on the test is the adjusted cost basis. That alone could have been the test question. They could have just said, your investor buys a municipal bond for 1,120 with 10 years to maturity. What is the adjusted cost base after six years? Mm -hmm. And you would say 1,060. Here, they're making you go a little further. They're saying, okay, so your cost base is 1060 and you sold it for 1030 So you're losing $30. Right on. So that's how we do that. We just compare that now to this. It would be very easy, by the way, very easy to miss this by saying, oh, I got an easy one. I bought it for 1120 I sold it for 1030 No, we got to compare the uh, adjusted cost base to that. And you are correct that this would be a loss of $30. Now, in debrief, about half the time people tell me they've seen this, uh, half the time they didn't see it. So it's one of those 50 50s. I feel like I saw this a few times and I just, you know, it's, I mean, they don't tell you what you got wrong. So you're always like, right, right. So it's definitely testable. Now, the other version of this, and somebody reached out to me on social media on this next version. So when we do a, OID, original issue discount, or a zero coupon bond, it is very testable to know that we're going to do straight line amortization upward. And I would know that is called accretion. Mm -hmm. Now, but since this is a municipal issuer, the imputed interest is not taxable. There is no phantom income like there would be if this were, for example, a corporate OID or the corporate zero or a treasury strip or treasury receipt. And so here's an example of that. This is the one that this uh, person reached out in their practice problem. They had bought a uh, municipal, I think I forget what it was, Georgia County or some Columbus, Ohio, whatever. It was a Muni OID and they bought it for $500. Mm -hmm. 
And then they said it had 10 years to maturity. So remember, you're going to get back a thousand. And we'll just make up the 10 years here. So, you know, making $500. Over the 10 year period. Yeah. And what we would do, boom, boom, 10 years. Same deal. We're going to adjust our cost base up each year, 550, 600. And then remember, the only part of a muni bond that is tax free is the coupon. So if coupon. we sell this for more than our adjusted cost base, that's going to be a capital gain. So that's going to be $50 a year that we would adjust our cost base. So this would be 550. This would be, you know, 600. I didn't think about that doing the line with the actual, like, that might yeah, be. And then remember, though, it, it's because it's a muni that that $50 is not taxable. Yeah. Because it's a muni. If it was anything other than a muni, you would owe taxes yeah. on $50 you're not actually receiving. So there's a version of the, uh, the one that's more likely, by the way, is the muni bond at a premium. This one, mm -hmm. this one is more likely to be on the test uh, than the others. Does it?